I'm George Cherby, Fred Finn Radio from the Torino Film Festival 36. I'm here with John Butler, director of Papi Chulo. Good morning. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I'm really happy to have you here because the, f the film I saw yesterday night, it was a blast. It oh, was thank you. really. It was really funny, and it was the film that everybody needed at the end of the day. Yeah, you have to laugh, don't you? Oh, yeah, oh, we really do have to, a lot, yeah. especially now. The world is on fire. The world is on fire, and it's burning too fast, yeah. and we are not able to help it, to, to, to you know, stop it, so we have to go with the flow. And your film is uh, a good mm, breath of fresh air, let's say it. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, you were here at the festival four years ago with the stag, yeah. and now you're back again with Papi Chulo. Two very different films, but at the core of it, they're not that different. True. You, yeah. To me, you know? Yeah, both Am I male right? friendship stories, you know, both comedy, drama, um, maybe both about how it's important to have friends, I mm -hmm. think, and the value of that is... Uh, greater than ever. So yeah, they're quite similar in some ways. Uh, even if the, the, I mean, the, the outside of it is, is different, because this one is lighter, this one is LA, so yeah. sun, nice people, pretty stupid, but nice people. Yeah. And, uh, and it's a story about this weird friendship between a, a weatherman, a gay weatherman, mm. which is a typical stereoty the stereotypical image of uh, Los Angelinos, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's, well, you know, I don't have to tell you because you know. <laughs> and, uh, and this uh, Mexican worker, no, it's Mexican a Mexican migrant worker, yeah. Mexican migrant worker, which doesn't speak a word of English. The other guy doesn't speak a word of, Sp of Spanish, but they go, they, they go along very yeah. well. And it seems like a, a cathartic moment for the main character. So he uses this Mexican guy in order to talk to himself, basically, which, which, yeah. which is it? Well, I think he's, you know, never underestimate the importance of a friendly face. And he's looking for somebody to help to, uh, Sean, the weatherman, is looking for somebody to help to paint his deck. Mm -hmm. So he hires him to paint his deck. And within an hour of meeting him, <laughs> yeah. it becomes yeah. clear that this is a nice man. And Sean is lonely, and they begin to talk. Um, and they, uh, they have no language in common, mm. but they do a lot of pointing. Um, but they develop, yeah, a weird kind of... Uh, Friendship based on sign language and mm. food and music and all well, the things that the the, like. the funny and, and and interesting thing was that you managed to build up this relationship on being real and fun at the same time, but without becoming silly. Mm. And uh, the idea of having the Mexican man calling his wife, explaining her what's weak it is happening, is like a very good choice because that <laughs> that moments were really really funny. How did you manage? to build up this kind of good chemistry between the two, between Matt Bormer and the Mexican actor? Well, the best, Alejandro Patino is his name, the best um, thing you can do as a director is hire two really good actors, and those guys are incredible. Alejandro has uh, been acting for 30 years, um, but it's hard in America for Latino actors to get good parts because uh, they're not yeah. written for them. Mm -hmm. So. I was so lucky to get to work with him, and Matt um, is just one of my favorite actors, and he read the script and got on board, which I was so grateful to, uh, to get. But they, they just worked really well together. We did some rehearsals, we talked a lot, we ate food together, mm. and they're just two very smart, very funny, very compassionate men, and they went, uh, they, they committed to it, you know? Uh, so it was a real joy, it was a great experience making this film. I always wanted to make a film in Los Angeles that was about the Los Angeles that I see as mm -hmm. a foreigner going and yeah. visiting that city. So it was a privilege. I loved it. Yesterday when you, when you introduced the film at the screening, you said that every film now uh, in these days has to be a political film. It is a political film. I mean, even if, you, if it doesn't, if you want it or not. Yeah. And your film is a pretty political one if we, if we look at it because you deal with two main uh, big issues which are U.S. issues, but like worldwide issues, immigrants and gay, uh, gay gender. Mm. Uh, why did you choose those two? Why the character West has to be gay, for example, the lead one? Which was your choice? Um, well, <clears throat> every film is political now yeah. because if you choose not to address these issues, that's a political decision, you know the world is in such grave trouble. And uh, things that five years ago seemed obvious to me, like 
humanity and decency and compassion are now becoming contested, like out of nowhere. It is now seemingly like a valid conversation about whether people have humanity or not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, you right. have to make a film about the world as you see it. And uh, all I wanted to do was make a story about a gay man and a Mexican man uh, becoming friends. Uh, but the world changes so rapidly that by the time we finished it, suddenly uh, Donald Trump is talking about building a wall and uh, California is uh, on fire. And, you know, uh, politically, it's maybe the most difficult moment that the world has faced in my lifetime. So it's uh, a reflection of uh, just, I think, the sad state of affairs. But it's important as well to make a comedy uh, because I think it's important to uh, show that you can laugh uh, mm. as a way to be healed. So, and on the gay issue, it's important for me that gay men can be every man. You know, he's gay, but it's only one aspect of his character. And uh, it's important to me that the world is able to see these people as just human beings. You know, I'm a very proud gay man, a uh, gay filmmaker, a gay Irish man. Um, and those are all just uh, aspects of my character, but I'm a human being. Yeah. Um, and Latino uh, people in Los Angeles would like to be recognized as human beings yeah. as well. And actually, the, 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 the really interesting thing is that in your film, for, for Ernesto's family, the fact that this man is gay is absolutely not an issue. They couldn't no. care less. Yeah. They don't even consider the diversity or uh, uh, there, is, there isn't any, even a funny side to it. They don't care, yeah. which is a very strong message that, you, that you're, you're delivering. Yeah, it is. And it's important to say as well that this isn't just an American issue. Like the, we, no, no, of course. Yeah, of course like no. in, in Europe, we have the same difficulties with encountering great prejudice and not uh, affording people uh, basic uh, human dignity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're right. Um, people are capable of being good to each other. You know, yeah. It's just important to remind ourselves of that. Now. It's strange that this sounds weird. This sounds like peculiar instead of being like the norm, you know? Yeah, it's, it's really strange. I would say more than anything, though, because it's a comedy drama, you know, um, it reflects how much I love um, Los Angeles and how much I love these two men. You mm -hmm. know, the story comes from my life in the sense that I've been in L.A. and been lonely and have encountered great kindness, and that city has been very good to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a real thrill for me to be able to make a story like this that shines a little light into a corner of the world that I love. So, Well... It was, I mean, your, your work is very good here in this film. Thank you, you. You managed to convey all the messages you wanted. We had a, well, a wonderful time, so good. we are waiting for the next one. When is going to be the next one? I Not in four years' time, hopefully. That's a very good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, my next film will be my fourth film, and uh, who knows, maybe I'll be filming it at the end of next year. But mm -hmm. if you would like to give me $5 million now, I'll oh, make well, it tomorrow. Well, yeah, at the end of the interview, I can, drive you, I can write you a check. No problem. Great. Well, then we start filming on Monday. On Monday. Perfect. <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, my, my last question is about the, the life of Papi Chudo after, mm. after here. You're going to other festivals. Is the film going to be released? Yeah, so it, it, it premiered at Toronto and then mm. uh, premiered at London and now Torino. Uh, it has a U.S. cinema distribution mm -hmm. in Good. late April. So it will be on a lot of screens in American cinemas in April. And then in Europe, I would say, very shortly after that. After that, okay. Yeah. So a big life, I hope. Well, I hope so. hope so. I think every man, woman and child on this planet will see it. Good. This is, this, is, this is the good attitude. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you very much to John Butler, director of the film Papi Chulo from the Torino Film Festival. I'm Angelo Cerbi for Fred, the Festival Insider.